Ugh. Hey everybody, we got kind of a quick one for you today. I'm going to show you how to integrate Home Assistant with Pi-hole. And not only that, I uh, worked on this little custom card here that works pretty good, so I barely need to even touch the Home Assistant dashboard anymore. The green icon is a status, meaning it's actively blocking. I have some buttons here, so if I hit the five minute, for example, it's gonna go ahead and turn this off, which you can see there if somebody in the house is doing something such as um, uh, doing research for a paper, uh, need to go to news sites, you could just do a quick five, 30, or 60 minute disable. Uh, we have queries with a nice little graph blocked with a graph and the percent difference between those queries and blocked. And of course you can customize this however you would like. And I'll show you the cards I used and actually link to my specific configurations or YAML files for this. This assumes that you already have an instance of Pi-hole and Home Assistant up and running. I will link uh, down below if you're interested in getting those set up. But the first thing you're gonna want to do if you don't have the integration is head over to settings go to devices and services. And then from there, you're gonna to want to add an integration and search for Pi-hole. When you add that integration, it's gonna ask for your host, port, name, and the location. So you fill in that with the IP address of your server. Admin is the URL location. So you can see here the actual um, domain is ending in admin. And then when you click next, it's gonna ask for your API key. To go ahead and grab that, all you're gonna want to do is go into your Pi-hole dashboard, go down to settings, go over here to API, and then click on show token. When you click yes, show API token, you're gonna get a QR code as well as the text string for the co uh, token. Copy and paste that in there and you should be all integrated. Now, when you are in here, we do have the one device, which is Pi-hole, but we also have 14 entities or different things that we could track and do. The only real thing that you can do is right here, the switch Pi-hole, which switches it off and on. But then you have all these different things that you could go ahead and track. So we have the DNS queries. We have, for example, the uh, queries today, and you can see that it's in a graph real nice. But if you want to go ahead and add this to your dashboard, of course you can use the kind of built-in ones. This is the one I set up. If you just do add, let's go ahead and add something here. If you search by entity and you just go uh, pie hole, and let's say we wanted to add the uh, uh, pie hole DNS queries cached. Go ahead, click on that, continue. It's gonna give you a suggestion. You could have it show up just as a text thing right here add the dashboard and now we have a list of those queries and then you could go through and actually edit the configuration for that. But for mine, what I did, if I go ahead and delete this, hit done, I have two different cards here. This first one is the uh, bubble card. So I'll link to this down below. Uh, if you've never used this, this is a fantastic thing that you could get from uh, hacks. All kinds of different customizations and options. If I go over here, back to home, you could see I'm using it for the lights here, as well as the shades. Did some customizations here too, very similar to what I did with the pie hole. So I could close and set it to kind of some preset things that I do commonly for those automatic shades. Uh, if I go back up here, you can see I have the uh, five, 30 and 60 minutes. Now for this one, if I go ahead and show you the configuration, this one does have a graphical editor, which is really nice, but you're still gonna kind of have to dive into the code editor. But you can see here, button type, switcher, slider. Uh, the button type is the state and the entity is the uh, switch pie hole. Then for button settings, I just kind of customized everything to my specific liking. It's simple off on, but where I went ahead and added some stuff, actually it'll be easier to show this in the code editor. So this is everything right here the sub buttons. So then for button settings, I just kind of customized everything to my specific liking. It's simple off on, I hold disable. And for the service data pointing to that switch entity, you can add a duration. So for this one, it's five minutes. We have the target, which again is the switch, the name, so on and so forth. So it's really nice to be able to have that just in home assistant because everybody in my house uses it. And every once in a while they're like, the internet's not working. When in reality, they're just trying to access a site that just doesn't allow ad blockers. So now open up the app, it's right there, disable it for however long they need and they're good to go. Additionally, if we go into here, we do have some styling options that I configured. Basically what I did is on, I uh, changed the color and the border radius so it kind of matches everything else. I still have some work to do. This one's kind of important, the uh, bubble icon container, which is this icon. This is how I have the red green kind of uh, status notifier. 
So opacity and then the background color state equals on low will be green and then it will switch to dark red if it's um, the contrary. And I just made the buttons transparent just so they kind of show up as text instead of having a border and background color. And really that's it for that. The other one, the other card is the uh, mini graph card. These are really pretty. You could use the one that's just built into Home Assistant that will work as well. But I really do like this card and I've been playing around with it a little bit. And they have a very extensive documentation. If we go down here, we have all the different styles and options with examples that you could just go ahead and edit. If I go back over here and edit this card, you could see this is a uh, custom mini card. The first one is queries with the sensor piehole DNS queries today. I do have it as a little chart here with uh, points per hour at 10, a 10 uh, update interval. Some just general customization, you change that however you want and I have it set to show three hours just to kind of give it that nice visual aesthetic. It's not really um, critical information. I just wanted it to look pretty. And then if I go to, we have the other ones blocked and difference. And of course, if you go to the full code editor, you can see everything there. And I will go ahead and post these on my uh, GitHub page or my specific configurations. This is my GitHub for my entire home lab. I'm currently working on building out this home assistant folder here. Uh, I have the bubble card for the shades. I'm gonna organize this a little bit better here. Uh, local Tuya and Home Assistant, I'm setting up, you can see that big ass light thing behind me. I'm working on getting those working in Home Assistant. And yeah, so all that will be here. And I do hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, have a beautiful day and goodbye.